Hello and welcome. Today we are going to be taking a look at a few new things. We have a gorgeous new eyeshadow palette from Esum. This is the number three Harmony palette. We have four of the new Chanel Rouge Lure Velvet shades and the new Refer Synthetic brushes. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start off with the eyeshadow palette. So Esum was kind enough to send this to me. And this is the number three Harmony palette. I've had this for a couple weeks now and I have been playing around with it. If you are not familiar with the Eason packaging, I have to say it's some of my favorite packaging because it's lightweight, easy to use, rearrangeable. So you can see over here we have the little Eason logo and you just kind of push that and this slides off. You can take it off all the way if you'd like and you don't have to. And then if you wanted to, you can see the names through here, but you can see there's also a little kind of like a little lip for you to pull this out. And then these are completely, you can just punch them through. So I'm just using my finger to lift it up. I don't even have to get a special tool. So you can rearrange them. You can mix and match with their other eyeshadow palettes. So I love that feature. And then when you're putting it back on, you just want to make sure, you know, that if I were going like this, it wouldn't lock because you want the little Esom logo to go into the cutout portion here. So let's start off with swatching these and then i have a few demos where i've used these and we'll talk about the products then so i think it's best to go down in the columns because they've really arranged these kind of in groups from light to deep in a particular color story but you've also got like a whole light palette medium and deep as well so i love the way that these are organized let's go down in columns though so you can see these are all mattes by the way and you can see that our first column here, we're looking at more of these orangey shades. And these really remind me of a sunset. That's what this palette makes me think of. So you can see we start off with kind of a light medium orange. We go into like a little bit of a deeper one. And then our deepest shade has a little bit of brick red in there. The next column here, we have kind of this deep mustard and we move into some kind of warmer like khaki browns and you can see our deepest shade here is going to be an actual true brown and it's actually a pretty neutral brown but it does lean a little bit warm this palette overall is going to be warm next we have kind of these coral shades so we have we start off with kind of a light peachy coral the shade in the middle here, and by the way, you can use these as blush too, and this shade in particular is gorgeous. Actually, both of these two are gorgeous for blush in my opinion. And then we move into a deeper red here. So this is actually more of a soft red. Then we have kind of a purple hue. So this is going to be a lilac, but you can see that our base here on this is actually going to be a warm pink. So it's definitely going to be like a warmer purple. So for those of you who have warmer undertones and the purple shades that have been coming out have been too cool, this is a good alternative. And then we go on to like a deeper pink. It's more of a soft fuchsia. And then our deepest shade in this column is gonna be more of a magenta. The last column, we are looking at pink. So we start off with a soft, warm pink. This is kind of like your classic Crayola Carnation pink. <laughs> That's what it looks like. And then we move into a soft dusty rose and then our deepest shade here is going to be more of a true rosewood and again you could use these as blushes if you want and we've got a great range of shades here so let's move into the demos Esom cosmetics describes this palette as working in perfect harmony this poetic collection features 15 beautiful matte pigments all housed in a sleek magnetic palette this melody of hues from soft peach, poppy, and buttercup to hibiscus, marigold, and saffron and orchid is designed to bring a soft transition to a structured look with an ethereal wash of color for eyes and cheeks. Our unique formula for matte pigments incorporates a rich shea butter to ensure a skin conditioning base and a smooth, long-wearing application, ideal for use around the eye area and face. And then it does note not immediate eye area, which I think just means that you should not be lining your waterline with this. You don't want to get the powders in your eyes. And I think that's pretty standard in general. They go on to say, Esom's distinct formulas are performance focused and developed with comprehensive attention to color and finish formulated with clean, talc-free, vegan ingredients. 
Now, just a few details about the palette. It is made in Italy. As I mentioned, it's vegan and cruelty free. And we have 15 one gram shades. So overall, I think it's a really beautiful warm tone palette. It definitely is reminiscent of a tropical sunset to me. It retails for 80 US dollars and it's available directly on the Esom Cosmetics website. Now, if you have any of the other Esom Cosmetics palettes, these are completely interchangeable. And I have to say, I think that this matte palette works great in combination with some of their shimmers. The Esom matte pigments are texturally very, very finely milled and they feel like they are in between that of a traditional powder formula and a pressed pigment. So a pressed pigment, you know, that's gonna be very smooth, doesn't really have much powder kick up, whereas a powder eyeshadow has some powder kick up and, you know, it can be really easy to blend out, but it can be a little bit messy. So it's sort of in between those two extremes there. So you are gonna get a little powder kick up in the pan. You can see when that happens, that's incredibly finely milled. It's more like powder dust versus, like it's, is very, very fine. And uh, you're not really gonna get a lot of fallout or anything like that on the eyes. But they go on very smoothly, they blend out easily, and you wanna make sure, because these are pretty pigmented products, you wanna make sure you start off with less product and build up. Because as you're kind of buffing these into the eye, you can really kind of intensify that pigment. So I think it's a really beautiful formula. I love the Issa mattes. And I think this is a very beautiful warm color story. And it really is reminiscent of some of those like warmer shades of a sunset or, you know, even a flower garden in the spring. So let me know what you think of this palette. I'd love to know your thoughts on this one. And I just wanted to show you a quick comparison. This one here on top is number three, the new palette. And down here at the bottom, we have number one, Balance. And this was their first palette. So you can see the first palette is pretty much all neutrals. We have some plums in there, but you, we actually have a mix of warm, cool tones and neutral shades. So it's a great neutral resource. So this will pair beautifully with that. And then if you're looking for a palette to pair some shimmers or metallics with, I really like this one for it. So this is the number two intensity palette from Isom. And you can see we've got some cooler shades in this palette, but we also have some warmer shades. Just wanna go ahead, I'm gonna just swatch these two right here and kind of put those with these over here. So you can just kind of see how those colors go with it. Overall, I think this is a great palette to pair with it. And as I've been playing with the mattes, I've often paired them with that one. Now we do also have this, this is, probably my favorite of the Eason palettes. This is number four, Elevate. And you can see we've got more cooler tone shades in here, but we do have, I'm just gonna swatch this second row here. We do have some warmer shades here as well. So this is one that you can pair with this palette as well. But I still, if you had to pick one, I would go with number two personally. So one more time for the swatches here. And Bring it a little closer so you can really see those colors. And again, what I really like about the colors in here is, aside for use on the eyes, you know, this half is really just great for blush. So it makes it a really nice multi-use palette. Now let's go ahead and move on to the new Chanel Rouge Allure Velvets. So every year, at the beginning of every year, Chanel re releases new shades of their Rouge Allure Velvet formula. This year's collection, this one is called La Nuit Blanche. So we have special white matte packaging here. So we do have our click top and it does have our shades here on the bottom, but what I'm really happy to see is we now also have them printed on the side here. So in this case, you know, this one here is three o'clock. Now all of these shades are hours. So it's supposed to be like hours of night, you know, midnight through dawn. So we're gonna swatch these and we'll take a look at the product details while we look at the lip swatches. So we're gonna do these on my hand here. This one here is shade number three. And you can see, you can put it on sheerly. If you put it on sheerly though, it can be a little patchy. You'd wanna use like a lip brush or something to kind of smooth that out. And then built up here is this stunning, sort of like a fuchsia pink, but it does have a little bit of a warmer undertone. A lot of times when we see these bright pinks, they're very, very cool. And this one is not. 
Now I also picked up, I picked up three, four, five, and six. So this one here is number four because of my vein there that kind of went a little differently but this is going to be a brown online it kind of looked like brown with a little bit of purple but it's not it's really more of just a true brown there's actually a little bit of a golden reddish hue to it so think of like the bark of a redwood tree so that's what it makes me think of and then at number five here this is a really beautiful berry shade here and you can see we've got a little bit of purple in this, but we also have, you know, kind of that quintessential berry, just a little bit more purple than what we usually see. A lot of times the berries are a little bit more red, whereas this one leans more purple. And then number six is what is on my lips right now. And this is really gonna be more of a rosewood shade. So you can see we do have a warmer undertone to it. It's a really beautiful rosewood though, and it makes me think a lot of this last shade in the e -Sum palette. Let me just go ahead and put a swatch of that next to it so you can see how close those are. As a matter of fact, shade number five is kind of like this more magenta shade here in the e -Sum palette as well. We definitely have some similarities there. Let's move on to product details while we look at the lip swatches. So there are eight new shades of the Chanel Rouge Allure Velvets. These are all limited edition. And again, they have this limited edition matte white packaging here. And these are made in France with an 18 month shelf life. We have three and a half grams of product. This is the same Rouge Allure Velvet formula that we've seen over the years. So the shades range, as I mentioned, they go by hour. So we go, start from zero, which is your midnight, all the way up to seven. And According to Chanel, these are inspired by the theme of the night city and parties. They give the lips a bright color with a matte finish and their numbers represent the time from midnight to morning. These lipsticks retail for 50 US dollars. They also have a couple of sets that are available. Now, there's really no uh, monetary reason to purchase a set. With the set, instead of getting the lipsticks in an individual box, you will get it like there's a set of two, you would get that in a double box or a set of four, you get it in a big four box. But price wise, they are the same. There's no discount for purchasing as a set, but you are limited to the colors that they have selected. The Chanel Rouge Allure Velvet formula is pretty classic. You know, we've seen this for many years. It has kind of a thin, lightweight texture on the lips. You have a little bit of that powdery feeling in there, but it's very smooth. It glides on easily, very easy to use, comfortable to wear a long time. So I think overall it's a nice formula and they've got some really nice shades in this launch. So let's take a look at just a few quick comparisons before we move on to the rougher brushes. Now I want to take a look at some of the Lisa Eldridge lipsticks. So we're gonna go ahead and swatch just a few of these kind of right on the side here. So I'm gonna take Velvet Carnival, which will be the first skyscraper rose. And let's start with those. So we're gonna put Velvet Carnival right here and we'll put skyscraper rose right here so you can see how those compare and again shade wise we're looking at three four five and six so five is paired with carnival whereas skyscraper rose is paired with three all right here we have velvet decade and velvet cinnabar so let's go ahead and squeeze these in there's decade which is going to be significantly cooler and there's cinnabar which has a lot more red in there and that red has more of an orangey hue to it. All right, so now we're gonna look at Velvet Blush right here and Velvet Muse, which Muse is my favorite from Lisa Eldridge. So you can see it's kind of similar to those. I'd say it's more of a mix in between the two shades. This lipstick here is Prada P55. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this one right here next to the three o'clock shade. Now, if you look at that, if you use one sheer swipe, they're gonna look pretty identical on the lips, very, very close. But if you build that up, you'll see that the Prada is cooler with more of a blue tone base. Now, this shade here, number five, really made me think of a couple of shades that we saw for holiday a couple of years back now. So this is Givenchy 338. 
I'm just gonna put this right here. Now you can see the 338 is gonna have more red in it. But I also want to look at the Guerlain shade, also from that same holiday. This was 777. And this one here, I mean, I have to say, I still love this shade. I wear it a ton. And you can see they're pretty close. This one also has a little bit more red in it. It's actually more pink than red. So we've still got more purple in the Chanel. Now another Guerlain lipstick, this is number 19. So this is one of the ones that came out with the fall collection last year. And you can see it's gonna be a cooler brown. This one here actually has a little bit of purple in there. And this is Chanel Rouge Allure 204 Sensation. So let's go ahead and put this one right up here as well. And you can see this one has a bit more red in there. And it's also a little bit cooler. It's got more of this red and purple in there. And then this is the new Tom Ford Slim Lipstick in 153 Velvet Tux. I just wanted to see how this, oh, that one's more pink. This one here is 100. Might as well, I'll just put this one right here, but. That's not gonna quite go either with any of these. So I hope those comparisons help so you can kind of see some of the nuances of the shades, how they match up with things that you might have in your collection. Let's go ahead and move on to the brushes. And we're gonna look at the new brushes from Refer. So Refer has released three new brushes. These are synthetic. You can get all three of them for $36 total uh, from their concept store. If you're not familiar with the concept store, what happens is you place an order through there, you get their brushes at a steep discount. And a few weeks after you've ordered, they'll send you an email and request feedback on the brushes. And this is how they kind of determine their designs. They make any improvements and just adjustments and so forth to their brushes. So this is a great deal and a great way to try these out. So the synthetics, you can identify that they're synthetic by having the B. So we have B01, B02, and B03. And then you can also tell, I mean, mine are dirty right now from the demos, but you can also tell when you look at brush hairs, you know, the way that they look and shine in the light as well. So these are synthetic, they are incredibly soft. Now we'll talk about the details of these brushes while we look at some demos here, but let me start off with these in order. So first off we have B01. And you can see that we have kind of this curvature here where it has a very slow curve up. It's gonna be very dense. And here, we'll use my arm here. And you can see it's soft yet dense. And this is the multitasker brush. I think this is the most useful brush in this set of three. You can use this for under eye concealer. You could even use it to buff in like an eye base or something like that. You can use it for contour. You could use it for highlight. You could even use it for blush if you wanted to. You know, it's got such a variety of uses. You can use these with creams, liquids, powders, but personally, I like the synthetics for creams and liquids. So that's B02. B0, I'm sorry, that was B01. B02 is a larger version. We have the same shape. And see the shape is going to be pretty much the same here, but this is gonna be overall bigger. This is gonna be ideal for foundation. You can see how much flexibility and give you have here for this. Uh, and that's because it gets a lot longer there. And I think it's like a really great brush. So you can use this for foundation, cream blush. I have that in the demo, so I'll show you that in just a minute. And then B03 is an eyeshadow brush. So again, creams and liquids, this really excels with. You can definitely use this for powders as well. And I did show you that in the demos today, but you can see this one's very flexible, sort of in between a crease and a shader brush because we're not as fluffy as a traditional crease brush. Plus we have kind of that pinched ferrule here, but we do have a bit more width than a traditional shader brush. Now, one thing to note, you can see, I do have a little bit more of a curvature you can, on this side here. So you can see that mine kind of goes whoosh and it curves back down. So we've got a steeper angle on this side and a more shallow angle over here. 
So when I first opened the brush, and by the way, Ruffer was kind enough to send me these, um, I thought that they were the same on both sides, but you can actually see that we do have a bit more of an angle here. And instead of the tallest fibers being directly in the center with the same amount of bristles on both sides, you can see that they are a little bit more to this my right at this point. Let's take a look at the demos while we talk a little bit about the details. Now, rougher brushes are typically made in Japan. They are done in the Fude style, handmade by artisans and so forth. And these synthetic brushes are a little bit different. So I know rougher has been working on finding, you know, the best synthetic bristles for quite a while, ever since the first conversation I had with them, which was probably four or five years ago. So I know it's definitely been a long, arduous process for them. And they ended up partnering with an American company who has manufacturing facilities in China, which means that these brushes were actually manufactured in China according to designs specified by this American partner that they have. Now, if you're familiar with my channel, then you know that I love Fude brushes. I love natural hair brushes. I find that they perform a little bit better, but I do have some favorite synthetic brushes. And those would be things like the ESM V series. I really like the BK Beauty brushes I've used. You know, some of the West Metelier and Ray Morris brushes have been great. So there are definitely some great synthetic brushes on the market as well, but I still prefer natural hair. I have to say these new refer ones are really, really nice. So they definitely go up there um, with some of my favorites. But I have to say the ones that I like, I prefer the B02 and the B01. Those two are my favorite from here. The eyeshadow brush I think is nice, but um, you know, it's not a favorite for me. It will, you know, put on your shadows very nicely, very easy to use. But I think that one for me, I would prefer something to be a little bit shorter in the bristle length than this one is. And that's gonna be part of the feedback that I share with the refer myself. Now, as we're looking at these demos, you can see I definitely used the B01 a lot in these demos just to kind of show you how versatile this one really is. It's such a great size and density. We have these short fibers here. Again, these are incredibly soft. If you have very sensitive skin, these are very soft, so they should still work for you. And this works so well for under eye concealer and for contour, you could use this for like a cream bronzer or highlighter. You could even use it for cream blush. You know, the recommended blush brush from Westman Atelier is similar in size. So we'll take a look at that in a minute. But I think this is just such a versatile brush. I think it's a great size. And I love the curvature on this because it really helps you control how much product you're putting on because you have that angle there. So you can definitely kind of you know, decide how much of the bristles you want kissing your skin. So the B01 is definitely, in my opinion, the most multifunctional brush from this set. And then moving on to the B02, this is such a nice foundation brush. Now it is going to be dense, but it's also very soft. And because of this curvature on the actual brush head here, we do have a lot of flexibility on those longer bristles. So this brush, in my opinion, is best used for your thinner foundations. So like serum style, liquid, thinner liquids and so forth. You can use this with something a little bit thicker, more of a cream style foundation. But in my opinion, the application for this is better off changing. So if you want to swipe and kind of, you know, swipe like a traditional foundation brush, then you want a thinner um actual serum foundation. But if you wanna use a thicker foundation, this brush can actually kind of replace any sort of makeup sponge that you might use with a patty motion because it is dense enough to provide that. It's very, very soft. So you can actually pat your foundation in with this brush and you get a very nice finish as well. Now, I also really like this brush for cream bronzer and cream blush because again, this angle will help you control if your if the brush size feels a little bit too large for the color you're working with, you know, you are in control of how much of it actually touches your skin. So I find that to be really good, but even if you didn't even want to think about any of that, I think this is a really good size for cream blush and cream bronzer. So I think it's just a really nice brush overall. 
So this is definitely one that I really like. And then moving on to the B03, and you could see in the demos, I wanted to show you what the B01 looked like for using it as an eye base um, applicator. And then you can also see the B03 and how that performs. So the B03, you know, this is gonna be a little bit fluffier. It works really nicely to blend out the creases, but I do think if you're covering your eye with one shadow, um, I think this one's better for blending it out. It's fluffy enough, but for straight depositing, I would prefer something a little bit denser or a little bit shorter fiber. So there's a little bit more control. This one's a little bit fluffy for me in that respect, but it works very nicely if you're using a cream base and then you're applying some like powder shimmer or glitter or something on top, it does work well for that. So overall, I think all three brushes are great, but the B01 and B02 are definitely my favorite. However, right now they are available at Refer in the concept store as a set, all three of them for 36 US dollars. And I don't think you can go wrong with that. It's such a great deal and a great way to try these out. All right, so we're just gonna do a few quick comparisons. And we're gonna start off here with the B01. So again, we have this nice slant here, but it's a very, you know, it's a very gradual slant. So just a few quick comparisons, just so you can see Sonia G, this is their soft concealer. You can see the size difference here. The refer is gonna be a little bit larger. And again, we have more density. Look at the flexibility with the Sonia G versus the refer and how much of this kind of moves all as one. But I also wanted to take a look at this. This is the Baby Blender from West Med Atelier. So when they first launched this, this was intended to be the brush for their cream blushes. So you can see size-wise, they are pretty similar. So the difference here is we do have kind of, um, you know, kind of curves and tapers at the top here. So we get a little bit of a smaller head versus a wider head here for the refer. Dimensionally, uh, with the actual diameter, the refer is gonna be slightly larger than the Westman Atelier. You can see the Westman Atelier has a bit more flexibility here because we do have longer bristles. Moving on to the B02, you can see we have a bit more of a, a bit more of an exaggerated uh, angle here than we do with the B01. And this is the Refer 31 brush, which is actually one of my favorite foundation brushes. This one's a mix of synthetic and goat hair. And you can see we do have it's gonna be more of a sharper angle here. You can see we have a steeper incline and the brush head is going to be bigger. You can see overall the 31 is a large brush and this has those longer stippling fibers in it. So you can see that this one here is gonna be a little bit stiffer in motion versus the B02. So you can see how much that bends is how soft it is on the skin. The way this one feels on the skin, although the shape is different, made me think of this one from Kogan Doe. So this is the buff brush from Kogan Doe. It's very soft synthetic fibers. This is one of my favorites. Uh, you can see though, we do have more of a curved top versus the angle here. And I would have to say that these feel very similar on the skin when you're applying the foundation in terms of how much flexibility and so forth you have here. The refer is gonna be a little bit denser and it does feel a little bit smoother. The fibers feel a little bit softer. Now, a lot of times newer synthetic brushes do feel softer than older ones. So that could be partly due to age, but it's probably due to the actual uh, synthetic fibers that refer's using. And then one more quick comparison. This is the 101 from BK Beauty. And you can see this also has a curvature. It's actually a pretty similar curvature, but the B01 is significantly larger overall. So you can see how those compare. And again, here's the B02 versus the BK Beauty 101. And since this is larger, we've got a little bit more flexibility with this one. Now for the B03, I wanted to show you just a few quick comparisons. This is the Refer 01. So you can see how they compare. The Refer 01 is a little bit fluffier and wider overall, and the fibers are ever so slightly, just a smidge taller in the B03. Now, I also wanted to show you a comparison with the BK Beauty 206. The BK Beauty 206, again, is just a smidge shorter than the B03. 
you can see it's a little bit wider. It fans out more. This is slightly more pinched. And these are a little bit fluffier and airier than the B03, which you can see stays together a little bit better. It's more of like a great sweeping paintbrush kind of motion. So those are my quick comparisons for these rougher brushes. So I'd love to know what your favorite products were that we featured here today. Again, we've got this beautiful Esum number no. three Harmony palette and it's got these beautiful warm mattes that can be worn on the eyes or on the cheeks as blush. And I have to say, I really like this palette a lot, particularly this half where you can use it with the blush. You know, it's so hard, hard to find nice purpley blushes that, you know, with a purple blush, you don't want too much blue base in there because then it can look more like a bruise. These really are pretty perfect to use on the face, in my opinion. And then we have four of the new Chanel Rouge Allure Velvet. So we have three, four, five, and six. I think they're beautiful colors, classic formula, and they're just a lot of fun. So if you're interested in picking any of these up, I think they're a really nice matte formula. And then we have the new Ruffer brushes. And again, I don't think you can beat this deal. Three brushes for $36. And they're synthetic, so you can use them with any products, but I personally think that they excel with liquids and creams. So I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much to Raffer and Esum for sending me some products today. I really appreciate it. And I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great day.